Hey, what's up YouTube? Today we're gonna be working on this 95 Toyota pickup. It is a single cab short bed. And as you can see, it has a big wheel gap. So we're gonna go ahead and lower it with some leaf springs from Street Edge. And we're thinking that they are exactly the same thing as Beltec. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it for you. These are it. It's a three leaf pack and it has this little extra piece. Exactly like Beltec actually front and then it has this, their street edge sticker right there with the part number and these are supposed to give you a three inch uh drop so before we lift up the truck let's go ahead and measure so we're getting 27 and three quarters and that is on a 14 inch wheel with 205 75 14 so let's go ahead and jack up the truck put it on jack stands and take off these wheels just so I can show you exactly what needs to be removed. Okay, so now with the wheel off, we're gonna go ahead and remove this shock bolt and it's a 14 millimeter bolt. Okay, so next we're gonna do the U-bolts, but first we're gonna lower the jack a bit more and then get to these. I think they're like a 19 millimeter. Okay, so we have it with a little bit of tension. And um, we're gonna remove all the U-bolt uh, nuts. And we're gonna let it sit on the leaf springs. Cause the diff is on top of the leaf springs. So even if you remove the U-bolts, it'll still sit on top. So let me go ahead and do that with two hands. All right, so we got the nuts off of the U-bolts. And that's what came down. So we're gonna reuse this and the U-bolt come off. Set those aside. And if you were using lowering blocks, all you would have to do is remove this uh, big plastic thing or metal thing, whatever this is. You would have to remove this because I've seen people having to drill out their blocks, but it's not the blocks, it's this piece right here covering the bolt. But since we're gonna replace the whole leaf spring, we're just gonna leave those in. And we're gonna go ahead and do these 19 millimeter bolts. Well, they're actually nuts. There's this one right here and this one up here. So we're not gonna do anything to the top. We're just gonna take it completely off because this whole metal piece comes out. So we're gonna take this off, take this off, pull this out and order for the leaf spring to be released. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, so with those two bolts and washers out, pull this whole piece out. I mean, you could let it hang right here, but we're just gonna remove the whole thing. And this is able to slide out. But before we slide, oh, actually we could do it now. There, so that's the back side. Now we're just go over to the front so I can show you which bolts have to be removed. Okay, so up here in the front, this 19 millimeter bolt has to be removed. There's a 19 millimeter nut behind it. So let me go ahead and remove that and pull this bolt out and then the whole leaf spring is able to come out. So now your whole leaf spring pack comes out. Now let's go and bolt the new ones and slide them in and then you just basically put everything back together so let's go check out the new ones so these are the leaf springs this is the, the street edge this is the stock leaf spring and one thing i noticed is that on the belt tech this bolt is upside down so we had to flip that i don't know if you guys saw that video but we had to flip it and if that's your case all you have to do is put a clamp loosen this bolt flip it but keep that clamp on and then tighten the bolt you need the clamp so you can keep the leaf springs together while you remove the bolt. And then another thing is that these bushings were backwards on the bolt tech. So the big bushing is supposed to be in the, in the back. See, it has a bigger hole for the bolt. And then the smaller bushing in the front. So on the bolt tech, the bigger bushing was on the front and the smaller one was in the back. And we had to flip that as well. And all you have to do, if you if that's your case, it's just get a flathead or something, you know, just hit the edge of this little metal tube, put it like on top of something, hit it, 
it'll slide out and then you pull out your bushing and then you basically switch them around and on this leaf spring pack it seems like we're not going to have those issues so it should be ready to go in so we're going to go ahead and throw that on there and then we'll put you guys back on okay so one more thing uh that hole right here on your diff should line up with that pin so it could fall into place let me lower it a little bit okay that and should be good to put the uh, u-bolt and the uh, bottom plate on so we're gonna go ahead and do that real quick actually you know what the pin on the leaf spring is way too small for that diff hole so we had to remove these from the stock springs uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it on and then on the other side once I remove it I'll show you how to remove this well basically it's just this these little metal pieces are bent into the leaf spring and well you throw this on on top this on on the bottom and then you bend these in so we got that little piece in you see it right here and everything is on we just got to tighten all the bolts and nuts and once we're done with the passenger side we'll go ahead and lower the truck and measure one thing we forgot to mention is that we have to remove the bump stops and either cut them or get some shorter ones. So this is a size 12 for both of these bolts. And we're just going to go ahead and take them off for now. And see if we cut them later on down the line or if we get some new shorter ones. These are still in good condition. What we did to the blue one is we just cut it with the Zawzall. So it's like we left like about half an inch of that rubber piece. And we might just do that to this one. For now we're just going to remove it. Okay, so this is from the passenger side. You can see this goes over the leaf spring. Let me flip it over. So, to get a flathead or something, straighten this out. We're pretty sure it says this on the on the instructions, but we didn't read them. this and then tap this off and once it's off uh, you put it on the new leaf spring this just slides out so this is the bottom piece and this is what we need like that so this goes on top of the other leaf spring and it seems like the whole center so it doesn't really matter what way you put it so let me go ahead and finish the passenger side so we can put it on the floor. We finished the rear last night, so now let's work on the front. We're gonna jack up the truck and put it on jack stand. Let me just show you guys what we got for it. So this is also from Street Edge. The whole kit was like 400 bucks for something. We're using the same uh, shocks that we had on there because those aren't that old, so they didn't need to be replaced. So this is one of the spindles. And it also comes with some pins for your ball joints. And that's it. So this is trash. So one of the one of these is left, the other one is right. Now we're going to remove the caliper from the spindle. So they are, I don't think it's a 17, but we're going to use a 17. The 16 didn't fit. I don't feel like looking for the, for the standard types for it. So we're just going to go ahead and use the, seven and hopefully, the 17 and hopefully it doesn't strip the bolt. There's one down here and there's one up here. Now we're gonna put this to the side, make sure it doesn't, you don't let it hang because the old crusty ass brake line might rip. So just hang it on somewhere, lean in on something. No, actually not here, maybe somewhere around there. Now we have to remove this dust cap to remove the whole hub assembly. Now we have to remove this cotter pin 
Okay, so with the cotter pin out, we're gonna remove this little cap. And then we have to remove this nut. It's a 30 millimeter, but it's not, it's not supposed to be tight. We do it with like some um, channel locks or something. So then this comes out. And there is a washer in there, so make sure you don't lose that. See the washer right there? You could slide the whole thing off. This is the washer and the bearing. So we're gonna slide it off completely and then set it aside. I'm gonna put the camera down real quick. Okay, now we're gonna remove the cotter pin from the tie rod. And then we're gonna loosen up the uh, nut, which is a 19 millimeter. Once it's loose, you just back it off, not all the way, but just enough. And then you smack this with the big hammer. Once it's off, but well, once it's loose, you remove the uh, nut to pull out the tie rod and set it aside. Put the nut back on the tie rod just so you won't lose it. And next we're gonna remove these nuts and bolts. Well, these two are nuts. I think they're like a 10 millimeter. Yeah, these are 10. So let me go ahead and remove these two and then we'll go ahead and remove the ones in the box. All right, so now that these two are removed, we're gonna start removing these. These do have some pins. So you have to remove the cutter pin. And then uh, hold the bolt from the back while you remove the nut in the front or else it's just gonna spin. That's gonna release this steering arm. You're not gonna be using that anymore. What we did next is put the jack under the control arm and lift it a little bit just to put a little pressure on the suspension. And we're gonna go ahead and remove this cotter pin right here. And then uh, we have to pull it out and then loosen this nut. Now that it's loose, we're gonna strike it somewhere around here so it could um, break the ball joint from the spindle. Let me go ahead and do that off camera because it's kind of hard to do it with the left hand. Alright, so it's broken loose. Uh, the nut is holding it in place. Now we're going to remove the cotter pin up here and do the same thing to the top. Alright, so the upper uh, nut is a 3 4 3 quarter inch. So we're going to use a brake bar. That one we have to do it like this. And once it's loose, we are going to. Uh, Smack the spindle like right around here to break this loose. All right, so now we can remove the nuts and remove the spindle. Top is loose and bottom is loose. So just remove both nuts and you can slide the upper control arm up. Okay, so once the spindle is off, you just have to place the new spindle in place just like the bottom one first or the top I think it'll be easier to do the bottom one just run it down and then uh, we'll insert the top one and do the um, same so you just push it down and put the nut Okay, so in order to put the lower control arm back on the spindle, we use the ratchet strap to put some pressure and get the nut on. So now, once you have both of the nuts tight, you insert the new cotter pins that come in the kit. So it's a pack like this. And you bend them how you want them. Put these over like that. And then for the top one, it's gonna be a little more difficult.
that. Next, we're going to insert the tie rod. Before we uh, before we put anything else, right after the tie rod, we're gonna loosen up the we're gonna loosen this up, and because uh, we're gonna have to turn out the steering a little bit, make sure it's kind of aligned, at least enough to get us to the alignment shop. So let me go ahead and torque this down and loosen those up. They're actually 12s. We're gonna loosen these up. And then I'll put you guys back on in a bit. All right, so when you put the uh, tie right back on, you have to put a new cutter pin. Next, we're going to install the dust shield, but it has to be notched. So you see how it hits right here? We're just gonna cut a line straight down, just enough to clear this. And so we'll put the bolts on. This is how much we cut off. Let me get the piece real quick. this much now it should sit perfectly fine without a problem there you go see I think we need to cut this a little more right here probably use a flat blue or something okay so we got it to fit enough clearance now we just have to run to the store Get four of these bolts with uh, four bigger washers because as you can see right here you know with the original washer it won't hold this dust plate the right way so we need two for this side for these bottom holes and two for the other side and um, four washers four bolts and four washers so we'll be back once uh come back with these bolts all right so it got dark on us but we got four of these bolts they are m8 1.25 and these are 12 millimeters long so we're gonna put some blue loctite and throw them on here now we're ready to put the hub back on so we remove this and we actually have to put some grease so let me go grab that so we're just gonna go ahead and put some good amount of this red grease from AutoZone, from Mobile One, all purpose grease. Now let me get the um, hub assembly on and then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Alright, so we got the bolt tight a little bit, it has to have a little bit of drag. And uh, then you put that little uh, crown thing on top, whatever it's called. And then you put your new cotter pin in. Goes all the way in, all the way. Probably be easier if I do it sideways, but let me see. You put it all the way in, and then you bend it. And then you can put your dust cap back on. Tap it into place. all the way in and now we're ready to put the caliper back on so I'm gonna have to do that with two hands and then uh, we'll try to oh and actually you know what we have to take this with some brake cleaner just to make sure that we don't have any grease on there okay so, and then put the caliper back on and then we have to make sure that the wheel is hopefully straight. If not, remember how we loosened those two 12 millimeters? Well, we're gonna go ahead and turn that. Uh, you'll see, you know, whenever you think the wheel's kind of straight. And then, uh, yeah, we can put the wheels back on. But let me finish with that caliper first. Now that the caliper is on, you can see that the whole assembly is cocked to one side a little bit. So we're gonna use some channel locks and twist the tie rod and try to center it. 
So that's all the way to one side now. And uh, let me tighten these and I'll finish up the driver's side and then uh, we'll put the wheels on. One thing we forgot to mention is that we have to remove the stopper. Uh, the bottom bolt is a 14 millimeter. The top one is a 12 millimeter. And we're gonna adjust it all the way in. Cause on the other truck when we did the lowering uh, kit or the lowering spindles, it uh, lost some of the turning ratio. So we're gonna turn this one all the way in and install it back on the new knuckles. This is how it sits now. We actually threw on the new wheels that we had for it. The rear did give us a three inch drop. But the front, uh, we drove it around a bit yesterday thinking it was going to settle more. But this is where it sits at now. So we're going to have to close the gap a bit more. You can see the back has less gap, wheel gap than the front. So we're going to do that with the torsion bars. But we're going to measure from fender to tire, roughly. So this one has three and one quarter. And the back has about two inches so we're gonna have to drop it like about an inch in the front and we're gonna do that with the torsion bars so we already went ahead and just we just loosened this uh top nut a bit backed it off if you make this tighter it's gonna lift up the truck if you loosen it it's gonna lower the truck so there's two nuts up here one is to hold it in place and the other one is the jam nut so we're gonna start turning this while loosening it and hopefully get that inch lower in the front. All right, so when you're done uh, doing your adjustments, you just tighten these uh, nuts together. Make sure you have two of them on there. I think these are like size 22. Then I'll show you what we got once we're done with this. So this is where it's gonna sit for now. There's like about an inch of gap, wheel gap right there. Also in the rear. This is pretty good. That's it for this video. Make sure to follow us on Instagram at Yonke underscore OXC film. I'll leave that in the description down below and we'll catch you in the next one.